I'm Jared Deanda, and we're in Miami, Florida at Global Engine Maintenance, where they service and maintain aviation jet engines. Let's take a closer look at this Snap-on Tools Great Garage. Now we're inside Jim here and I'm with Ozzy Diaz. Ozzy, how we doing, man? Pretty good. All right, so what is your role here at Jim? My role here at Jim is lead technician for okay. sub-assembly. And uh, tell us about the facility here, how many employees, how big is this place? We have about 80 to 100 employees and it's about 80,000 square feet. This facility overall, if you could break down what you do here, what you work on, what kind of engines and everything. CFM 56-3s-7 and we work on also the Pratt & Whitney JTAD 100s and 200s. Okay, the dash seven's kind of the Creme de la creme. That's what we're trying to get into now. So being a young man, a technician, how important is it to have the right tool, especially in aviation? It is very important. Okay. You come across a lot of problems, and if you don't have the right tools, you can't get the job done. Why snap-on tools for you? They're durable, they're dependable, and you can't go wrong with them. So what's your favorite or even most used tool? I'd say my favorite most used tool is this snap-on 3H drive Richard Ratchet. Okay. If you don't have this tool, you can't pull out the MEC you won't be able to take it out if you don't have this guy. We're taking a look at your boxes. Can we start basically where it all begins is the order of operations here. Definitely. And where would that be? That would be at that main door over there. Okay, so that's basically where the engines come in. Correct. Okay, let's take a look. All right, Ozzy, so this is basically where all engines begin and end because we're at the assembly, disassembly, break it down, where are we at? This is our assembly line, final assembly and disassembly. This is where the engines come in, they receive the incoming inspection, then depending on the work scope, they'll get either torn down into modules or broken down completely. At what point do you see the engine come in, or if there's just an issue? It could be just an issue or low cycles, it all depends. And this is the Dash 7 right this next to us? This is the CFM 56-7. Why is this engine kind of the, the best one right now? This is the one that's flying most right now on the 737s, Okay. which are taking over the Dash 3s. This is also a test engine because a lot of your technicians are getting familiar with this. Train we're using this as a training engine to disassemble and reassemble. You got a lot of engines coming in, a lot of moving parts. I mean, when you break this thing down, this is like, it's like a big turbo, man. Oh yeah, it's a whole lot of parts. Okay. Fan and booster, one and two support, the IGB, the LPT comes out, then the core comes out, and then you can even break down further from there. The next stop is pretty much the bread and butter of All the right. shop. That would be sub-assembly after it's gone through inspection and cleaning and NDT, depending on the part. Okay, well, can we check that out? Yeah, definitely. Right, thank you. All right, Ozzy, now we're in sub-assembly. First off, this thing looks like a time machine behind us. So many moving parts. Where are we at in the order of operations? Okay, here's where we build up our core. We start from the four to nine, we blade it up, we drop in the combustion, the HPT, put in the forward cases, the rear cases, and we get a core build here. Wow, so taking a quick look at this assessment, is this getting disassembled or this reassembled? This is getting assembled. Okay, so this is getting assembled. So this is kind of next stop for it. We go back to where it all began. Exactly. Okay, seen a lot of hand tools. We don't want to use power tools while we're assembling. Just in case we over torque anything, we might break a bolt, strip something. We don't want to do that. That's that finite very detail critical. of touch. Very yes. critical. That's why you're highly trained technicians. Correct. You're surrounded by a lot of employees. Can we talk to some more technicians? Yeah, we have a few technicians we can speak to. All right, cool. Lewis, how are we doing? Nice to meet you. All right, you're a technician here at GEM. How long have you been a technician in this field? Probably about 20 years now. Really, 20 years. Yeah. And did you kind of dream of this as a kid, or is this something aspirational? My mom used to take me to see the airplanes when I was younger, and eventually I kind of started with landing gear, moved up to engines and everything else. So. This is insane. What are we looking at here? This is a HPC compressor. This is the core of the engine, CFM 56. We're blading it up, and we use all these hand tools to make sure that everything's within tolerance. Some of the hand tools you're utilizing here, what do we got? I've had these for a while. This is the first thing you buy when you come into aviation. Kind of an interesting look there. Spline, I like the spline myself. This is actually the non-chrome, this is the chrome version. What are some of the other things we're uh, utilizing here? Ratchet. This one, uh, you, you know which tool this yep. is, it moves around. Yep, so so this is all small. Yeah, uh, tight tolerances, because awesome. where are we getting under, we're getting under, under here, there? And we're getting on the side. So this is the tools that we uh, require for this job here. We snug them down with this, and then we come in with a snap-on okay. torque wrench and make sure everything's within uh, tolerances, you know? So for being a technician, 20 years, why snap-on tools for you? 
I've got all kinds of tools. But to me, Snap-on is the best tool out there, so. Can you remember the first Snap-on tool you bought? These two. Really? Yeah. Really, that's funny. When so you're- Start aviation, this is what you need. It's, it's really impressive with what you guys do here. Yeah, thank you, man. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your time. All right, Ozzy, we are on this side of this massive facility here. Where are we and what's going on behind us? Well, this behind us is uh, machining. This is where everything comes to get cut the size, specs, and all of that. Okay, so your size and specs, like what would you need to machine either down or modify? It could be either the Mod 12 or HPT blades or anything like that. Okay, so quite a few different things. And then right behind us, even closer to us, what's going on here? This is a MRO show display. Okay. We're getting ready, we're setting everything out, how we're gonna lay it out, make sure everything's good, put all the displays, like our bar and all of that stuff. Can we talk to one of your technicians that's uh, putting this thing together? Definitely. All right, what's his name? Right, Christian, he's right behind us. Christian, all right, I understand he's a young cat too. Yes, sir. All right. All right, Christian, how long you been here, man? I've been here a little over four months, but I interned for three years. Intern, how old are you? I'm 18 now. I started when I was 14. 19, right? Did you start Yeah, I'm 19 day? now. See, I'm look at that. Now. You're, you're so young, you forgot how old you were. Yep. All right, so 19 years old. You grew up around this stuff. Yeah, I've always, always been around airplanes, engines, cars. I see a Snap-on rolling cabinet yes, back sir. here. Did that come from your dad, Snap-on tools? Working with Ozzy so much, I've always been surrounded by good tools, Snap-on tools, so he was like, oh, why don't you get a Snap-on toolbox? So I started off actually with like the little, like the two drawer cabinets, yeah. and I grew out of it, and I ended up getting this one. So, first snap on tool, what was it? Well, the first snap on tool I bought myself was this hammer. Can you tell a difference between a snap on hammer and a competitor's hammer? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just better quality. So, already at a young age, you're kind of seeing a difference when it comes to all the competitors and all the tools. Yep. What's next on the list that you need? I need more tools. Need more tools? <laughs> I need more tools. I gotta, I gotta buy more tools, get more tools. Eventually, like grow what? Out of this like one. what would be top of the list? Oh, well, honestly, I need sockets. What are some of the aspirations here at Gem for you? Honestly, I want to work my way up to being a lead man or a supervisor, just stepping up the ladder to eventually have my own company. Cool. Well, uh, we got some Snap-on tools for you to help you along the way. So, uh, thank, thank you, you so man. much. I really appreciate it. Thanks you for your time. Thank oh, you. thank you. All right, so where we're at now is we're seeing a few engines here, and one's even wrapped up, ready to be shipped yeah, out. Ready to be shipped out. I gotta ask, what does an engine overhaul, what does that cost? 500,000 and up. Yeah, I mean, what's what's an engine run? I mean, a brand new, say your Dash 7, your Dash 3. That could be anywhere from a million, 1.2, 1.3. Yeah. It all depends on what kind of work gets done on it. Yeah, so you're turning them over, efficiency is key. Your technicians know that there is a difference when it comes to tools, that's why they're using Snap-on tools, even including yourself. 19 years old, 30 years in the business, there is a difference, right? Definitely a difference. All right, well, thank you for all your time, man. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe for all things Snap-on Tools. We'll see you on the next installment of Snap-on Tools Great Garages.